Hi everybody, Jason here. Today I'm working on an iPhone 7 that was sent here for no power. I chose this phone to do a video on today because I believe this phone, well not I believe, but this phone is going to enable me to demonstrate a very common and very classic failure that is uh, actually quite nice to run into because uh, when you're in this business and you put a phone on the bench and you know exactly what's wrong with it, boom. Those are the money makers. So gosh, let me let me just show you what we're up against here. The first thing that I do in these cases, actually before I open the phone, this one's already open and I am proud to say this is a virgin iPhone 7. It is totally clean. I'm the first one to open it. I need to adjust my camera. It is a clean iPhone 7. Now the first thing I did before I opened it is I connected a charger, right? And we get nothing we are drawing zero amps from a charger. So then we kick the charger aside. The next thing I do is I go straight for the DC power supply because if it's not doing anything through the charge port, then we need to know what it's doing directly connected to the main board as with any current consumption measurements while the phones are booting, it needs to be done through the battery connector. So here we have connected our power supply to this iPhone 7 and we're going to press the power button, okay? Power button, one, two, three. Okay, now do you see how the current at the top right hand corner of the screen, it jumps straight to 200 milliamps. Let's do that one more time before we allow, allow this phone to boot. So now we have the, power, the DC power supply on and let's prompt this to boot. One, two, three, boom. While this boots, I want to talk about this for just one second. Let's get the power supply on the screen so you can see this current consumption while it boots. Um, a normal phone. Now, I have ran into this on, I think, pretty much every different iPhone model. I have not, well, iPhone model that uses the TriStar IC. Now, I haven't ran into this yet on the newer models that use the Hydra IC, but I have ran into this on iPhone 6, 6 Plus, SE. I've ran into this on iPhone 7, 7 Plus. I have ran into this on pretty much everything that uses TriStar. The normal current, as you can see here, we're, we're booted up and running. Let's go ahead and turn that off. The normal behavior, when you very first press that power button, you should get 80 milliamps with a brief pause and then heavier load as the phone boots. If you push the power button and you instantly get a high load, that means something in the phone is shorted. Now, in this case, we have verified that we get zero amps through USB, and we have verified that with the DC power supply hooked up, as soon as you press the power button, you get 200 milliamps. It's almost always a TriStar failure. The phone does not always boot. Some of these that are failed this way, you'll get a 200 milliamp load, and it just flatlines, and the phone don't boot. Others, you'll get a 200 milliamp load, and it'll go ahead and boot. But in either of those cases, you'll wind up with a phone that does nothing through the USB connector. So let's dig in on this and see if we can fix it, shall we? We're going to go ahead. We're going to unhook the power supply. You know, I don't think I have an iPhone 7 TriStar video yet. I don't even think I have a 7 Plus TriStar video yet. All right, so let's start taking the board out of this thing. We're going to need our handy dandy tri-wing here, the old screechy screwdriver. Let's grab our Phillips. I really should just jump to the point in the video where the um, board is out of it. But I think there's enough people watching this channel that like to see all this little knickknack stuff. So we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and leave this in here, guys. All right, we get our goofy looking little antenna thing out of here. Take the rest of these screws out. Being very careful to put them in the right spot. Who am I kidding? We just put them in a cup and shake them up and dump them out on the table like Yahtzee. And then we pick the longest screw and we drill that into every single hole until not one single hole is left unfilled. And then we take that long screw and throw it away and we try to hide what we've done. And send it to a dude with a microscope and lie about it. Because there's no way he'll be able to tell that I've long screw damaged it in every hole. We're just gonna say that uh, the phone was dropped and the screen was cracked, and now it doesn't power on. <laughs> That's what we'll tell the repairman. Okay, fellas, here is a 
Very nice, iPhone 7 PCB. Never had the stickers off of it, which I thoroughly appreciate. Let's go ahead and peel the sticker off the back of it. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now, this IC, most of you already know, but this IC that you see up here wedged up under that metal bracket, that is our TriStar IC, and that is going to be our point of failure. So let's dig in and fix this thing. What we're going to do here, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put a little bit of a shield over NAND just to keep my hot air from hitting it. So there, we're going to cover up the NAND. Now what we're going to do is start warming this up here to remove the TriStar I see. Now, some people will bend this metal shield. I have had these things come in here looking like hell from what people have been doing to change this TriStar IC. Now, when I run into one on, like, say, a 7 Plus that is underfilled, some of them are, I do cut the metal shield back in those cases so that I can comfortably chop around the IC. But whenever they are like this one is, watch what we're going to do here. We're just going to fish this right out from under here. Now, during this part of the removal, I do not have the board on a stand because I like to be able to sort of raise up on the entire board. While we snake this out of here. Okay, we're almost up to temp. I'm gonna go ahead and raise my hot air temperature just a bit. Let's keep warming this up. And what we're trying to do, we're trying to get this TriStar IC just to pop right up out from under that bracket. There's only like one row of balls that are up under that bracket, so you can easily still get to it. Starting to burn my fingers. There we go. We just pop it right up out of there. No cutting, no, no mutilation needed. Okay, now we're going to get down in there and clean up these pads. Right, so let's go ahead and get some flux on it. And we're going to use our micro pencil. and some hot air. Clean up these pads. That's pretty much everything on this side. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more flux and now we're gonna get up under this bracket. Okay, so I picked the board up just a little bit. Now we can see that last row up under there. See? No need to cut any brackets, we can just get right under there, right? Well, this is exceptionally hard to do and keep in front of a camera. Did I get that corner one? Almost, man. It's got one little ear on it back there. Can you guys see that? All right. Let's get a little more flux on the situation. It's kind of like a, a crappy situation because I'm trying to do it before the board cools off, yet the whole time I've got to hold it up in the air, I'm burning my fingers. And I'm holding it up in the air so that I can get up under that bracket. All right, let's get the iron up under here one more time. I think we're good there. Now I'm going to use some hot air here and I'm going to smooth out these pads that I gunked up while trying to get those far reach ones. If you're having issues with these things not turning into nice little domes the way they should, it's just because there's not enough heat. It's not any special formula or anything, it's just heat. That's why I'm running hot air to do this. There we go. So we've got the site cleaned off. And now... We're ready for a brand spanking new TriStar IC. I think I've got about 30 of them left in this bag. Conveniently separated into tiny little strips. 
All right, so the same way it came off, we're gonna snake that down under the bracket like that. Only I'm gonna go ahead and add a little more fresh flux. I'm going to go ahead and put this in a board holder so that I can solder this on. If I was just doing my normal routine, I wouldn't use a board holder for this. But since I'm trying to record this, I don't want the board moving and swelling while I'm trying to look smart. So here we go. The same way that I took it off, we're going to put it back on. We're going to snake it down underneath the bracket. Get it lined up, semi lined up at least. And let's start warming it up. Now I do have it mounted in a board holder, so it might take longer because we have to heat up the holder. Now, as soon as I see this flux start to bubble, I know that I should be able to let go of this chip and then not yet. And then it'll be stuck, but not yet. Ah, oh, no! Don't fall to pieces now. You're almost done with this job. Still getting used to this new hot air station. All right, let's let go now. There, we got her stuck down. All right, now we're ready to melt solder. So we're gonna start warming this up and we're gonna watch for this chip to drop. I should probably should do the last part of this from the outside of the board, but we'll be okay. Watch very closely. There it goes. See it moving into place? Give it a little nudge. Oops. We're good. All right. Now what we're going to do, this is what I do with all these. As soon as I'm done with TriStar, I take my alcohol bath, give it a little flush of alcohol down in there. Oh, it's so hot. That's the way we like them. Ah, it's so hot. Let me take some of this junk canned air that I bought down the road here. Spray off my alcohol. Okay, now my last part of this process here. I'm going to lay this board on the table like that, and I'm going to begin heating it up with hot air. All right, we've got that whole board nice and hot. Now while that board's hot, I'm going to go ahead and put the sticker back on. Beautiful. It's just so beautiful. This is, it's beautiful. It's actually pretty freaking ugly. Now while I put uh, pressure, pressure on this board, we're going to let it cool. Now we've got the board pretty well cooled off. We've got our sticker stuck back on there pretty dang nicely. And um, now we're going to slip it back in. There we are. Put this down. And I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to hook up the... Let's just go ahead and test this right off the bat here. All right, let's hook up a dock flex. I'm going to go ahead... Uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to hook everything back up that was hooked up before. So that we can't say that the 200 milliamps was due to the um, front camera or home button, which those things can produce odd loads on the 7 and 7 Plus. Okay, now let's go straight back to the DC power supply. Okay, so there we are hooked up to the DC power supply. We're going to push the power button and one, two, now wait, 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 wait. Remember before we would get, boom, straight 200 milliamps. What we want to see out of this is we want to see a low 80 to 100 with a brief delay 
and then a boot signature. Okay, here we are. Power button in one, two, three. 70 milliamps, a long pause, 170, and now, stinking light, and now this phone is booting. So by swapping out the TriStar IC, this little bitty, is it going to focus on that? No, it's not. But anyway, take my word for it. It's tiny. This little bitty IC was drawing 200 milliamps and um, it's got a fault inside. Now, if we were to peck around this thing with a multimeter, we could probably figure out what line is shorted, but I just, I have never felt that that was necessary. This phone is up and running. Now we need to see one more thing. Let's go ahead and make sure, um, let's slide to power off and make sure that we have working touch. We do, so we've just slid to power off. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna do here is we're gonna test and see if it'll charge, right? Because it needs to be able to charge. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of the DC power supply. We're gonna hook the customer's battery up to it. And now we're gonna connect a charger. And what do we get? We get a battery charging icon so that we, we can see that it is charging. And the USB current meter is now drawing just under one amp. So as you can see, we have gotten rid of the 200 milliamp load and we have enabled this phone to charge a battery just by swapping the TriStar IC. Let's all laugh at Jason doing a micro soldering job and then botching the screw replacement. Go back in the phone. Okay, that, that. We're almost done, guys. It's not complete until it has the penelopes in it. I always get nervous when these things show up for repair and they're missing screws right off the bat because some people are more advanced and they expect you to fix the logic board and send it back. Other people are not so advanced. And it's not the customer who has left all their screws out. It's one of the half dozen shops that they took it to before sending it here that left their screws out of it. So I receive a phone that's missing tons of screws and I don't know if that customer is more advanced and they're expecting to get it back and replace all their bracket screws and retaining it, you know, or if they're expecting me to do it. This one was complete. This was great. All right, let's close this little doodad up. But one more look. I like to do one last look before closing it up because you never know when you left something stupid laying behind. All right. Looks good. Good. This guy's going to be uh, this guy's going to be thoroughly pleased that he gets his phone back, data and all. Although this is one that he probably seen boot and probably had a clue that it was just a not charging problem. All right, let's plug our lightning cable back in. We get a battery charging icon and we get just under a one amp load. So guys, um, there you have it. This is a very, very simple, a, a, a very profitable, very easy to diagnose um, classic TriStar failure. I call this the 200 milliamp load. That is gonna be the end of this video. I do thank you all for watching. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, please give me a thumbs down. Either way, YouTube loves the reactions. And um, I will see you next time. Have a good day, everybody. Thanks for watching.